this mental picture and I saw Jesus and rain falling down drops, many, many drops over his face. One very amazing lady who lived in 17th century and her name is Jean Gaillon. This book which sent her to prison, she had a very intimate and very close relationship, not common for that time when she lived. But this deep exchange is the kind of union with God that I am discussing to get to know him so close, to recognize his voice. If we're laughing, he is here. If we're sad and crying, he is here. True union with God is permanent and lasting because it is inward and spiritual. And this book called Experiencing God Through Prayer, simply enjoy God. Use your imagination. Our imagination is powerful. If we could be just like Jesus and tell him, get away, get away from me, Satan. It is written. And it is written. It is written for you. God giving these words for you so you would learn them, understand them and trust him. He will respond to us as surely as the arrival of dawn. We never doubt that dawn will come. We never doubt that sun will arise in the morning. But why would we doubt in God's word? Bible tells us that he magnified his word above all his names. And we know how great the name of God is, any of his names. And of course the name of Jesus, God said above any name. And before this name, every knee shall bow. And only our doubts is hindering. For Bible says, this one who doubt shall not get anything, because he is like a wave of the sea. What are you believing for and still don't have any breakthrough? And I'm not talking only to you just now. I'm talking to myself as well. What is it? You know, Paul said, you have not yet resisted unto blood. Do we all have to bleed to receive our promises? Or there is another meaning to the scripture. What are you willing to sacrifice to receive your promise from your father? Do you know that father is in you? because of the Holy Spirit is in you. Jesus is in you and all his promises are in you. You just have to believe it and receive it. How do you receive? You receive by faith and you release in your promises from inside of you out by faith, by speaking them out force. And your answer will surely come. It's what the Bible say. And he shall come unto us as the rain, as the latter rain that waters the earth. The latter rain in Israel, it's a spring rain. It comes before the harvest and it's very important rain. There is two kind of rains in Israel. It's a former rain and latter rain. The former rain comes in autumn and it's before the harvest being planted. And then it's a latter rain. And also, in the Bible, this scripture, when it tells the former rain, another word for this rain, it's teacher. Because it's two different words for two rains. And the former rain, it's translated also like a teacher. Joel 2.23 Be glad than you, children of Zion, and rejoice in the Lord of your God. For he has given you the former rain faithfully and he will cause the rain to come down for you, the former rain and the latter rain. The former rain, the word teacher, pronounced like more rare in Hebrew. And it's why in a young translation, for example, he writes, Instead of the word former rain, 
which will come. He actually saying, the teacher of righteousness will come. And this confirm again that this scripture is talking about the first outpouring of the Holy Spirit. If these two seasons in Israel and the same we can apply them to the seasons in the church, the first seasons is the first reign where the first outpouring of the Holy Spirit and the second reign, which is the latter reign, it's a late outpouring of the Holy Spirit. And uh, in Joel 2.28, this is exactly the scripture which is Peter was um, talking about when he, in the day of Pentecost. Joel 2.28, and it shall come to pass afterward that I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh and your sons and your daughters shall prophesy your old men shall dream dreams, your young men shall see visions. But this scripture also referring to our days, to a latter rain days, to the last outpouring of the Holy Spirit. Because when Holy Spirit came to this earth, He never left the earth. He is now in us. In us personally, each one Christian who being baptized with the Holy Spirit and in those uh, in the church. So when outpouring of the Holy Spirit come second time, it will be coming out of us. For the Holy Spirit is within us. When the Holy Spirit came to dwell in us, He has brought with Him the Kingdom of God with all its benefits and promises. He has promised to dwell in our inner must beings, the new Holy of Holies. But also, when the Bible talks about this last outpouring of the Holy Spirit, it's talking about revival in churches on all earth. It's also talking about our personal revival, revival in our life. It's when sins become so obvious to everyone what's happening with us. Nobody will be able to deny that it is God because everything would be happening supernaturally to you. Sins will be visibly seen. All manifestation, all promises of God and, and Father, all will come on you and overtake you. They will be visible to everyone. Miracles will be happening. To you and to those around you and and as we move forward in emerging ourselves in God all his promises will come naturally because now time came when we want him more than anything he can do for us we want his kingdom first and all other sins will be coming to us just as sure as the latter rain spring rain which will come into your life and change it that nobody could recognize you or your life or even yourself for we are so close to that time when the lord will say to his bride arise my love my fair one and come away from among them.